Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. I'm John Zimmerman, and I'm absolutely delighted to welcome into the Ecamm Studios for Active Towns, Jordan Clark. How are you, Jordan? Hey, John. I'm doing great. How's it going? Uh, fantastic. Uh, so, Jordan, we're going to do something a little bit fun here. We're going to actually uh, do sort of a reaction video to uh, our mm -hmm. our ride that we took in Harlem there in the Netherlands on November 8th, which was your final day in the Netherlands uh, on the recent okay. trip uh, that we did. Uh, but before we do that, uh, why don't you just take a moment to introduce yourself? All right. So, yeah, I'm Jordan Clark. I live in Dallas. I'm an associate sustainability planner for TBG Partners, which is ha headquartered in Austin. And in my spare time, I co-host a podcast with my friend and former colleague, AJ Foffer. It's called We Built It That Way. It's about the, you know, the built environment and its impact on all of our lives and the, the attitudes and assumptions behind it. So I'm glad to be here reliving what was a really great day in Harlem. And uh, yeah, let's do it. Good stuff. Yeah. And I highly recommend that podcast. Uh, uh, really encourage everybody to go out and subscribe to We Built It That Way. So we're going to be uh, talking about uh, Harlem. And as I mentioned, it was the final day of, gosh, it was nearly a two week trip for you, right? Yep. Yeah. Two full weeks. Fantastic. Well, without further ado, let's uh, let's queue up uh, Harlem here. Uh, when As we kick this off, why don't you talk a little bit about this particular uh, train station? Because uh, I think it was rather unique for us. Yeah, this is my favorite train station that we came across in the Netherlands, and it looked really different from all the rest. A lot of the train stations are really new and kind of sleek looking. And this just like looks like it's from a completely different world almost um i think i heard it was the oldest one in the netherlands ah, okay. um and so they kept they kept a lot of the the sort of period architecture which was i loved it yeah yeah it's good stuff yeah i i was the same i i i immediately uh when we got off the train i was like oh i gotta snap some of these photos because the the rich wood i mean right here you can see in this one yeah. area it's just so cool so and then, yeah. hey, boom, we're, we had a, a quick little meeting with, yeah, Joel Crawford, uh, the author of uh, Car Free Cities. And then we yeah. just sort of catapulted ourselves into the city to just kind of experience it. Uh, what were you thinking when you, uh, you know, were rolling down the street here for the very first time right there in Harlem? Uh, probably how lucky we were that it was sunny and beautiful outside while we were along this canal here which our faces are covering up, but not for long. Um, and I mean, you kind of have the curve of the canal sort of creating this interesting vista from where we were. And it was sort of hard to choose which way to go because both sides look so inviting. Yeah. I don't know. What about you, John? Well, I mean, one of the things that, that really impacted me right away, because this was like a mid-morning uh, venture for us, and uh, th this pack of, of schoolgirls ahead of me, or ahead of us while we were riding, I was like, wow, there's just so many young teens and tweens out riding, mm -hmm. and uh, you, you You'll notice that. I mean, throughout this entire video, there's just so many school kids out riding around. I'm not sure if it was an early yeah. day off for them. Um, I can't remember exactly what time this was. This might have been around noon, I guess. But uh, that really resonated with me was just how many kids were out and about, you know, quote unquote, free range kids. <laughs> so. Yeah, you can see it here. I mean, and you can see it probably throughout a lot, a lot of the videos like the makeup of the typical person on a bike is just so different from our context over here, right? It's either the people who are biking for sport um, or maybe biking because they don't have another alternative. Um, but here it's just like, it's older people, it's, you know, teens and, and younger people getting to school. It's really, it's really cool. It's a real cross section. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing, you know, I'm, I'll press pause on this here real quick, uh, just yeah, to, to a reflect a little bit about this particular parking protected uh, infrastructure, uh, because I thought that this was a really nice um, example of how to do a parking protected uh, cycle path 
well. You'll notice the the extension that you you have in that buffer zone, so that uh, when the passenger door is open, they're they're not blocking the the the, the travel pattern at all. And then also, if as we move forward here, you can see both the the garbage collection that one to the immediate uh, uh, left there is is one of the underground uh, garbage collection areas but then you also see as we move forward a little bit here there are some green waste uh you know more typical north american style uh garbage uh, or, or collection uh, you know devices or whatever but you'd notice that uh yeah they're just completely out of the way of the cycle path which is which is just so refreshing yeah yeah, and there's still plenty of room for, you know, plenty of sidewalk, um, which is not always the case on some of the, the narrower streets over there. Right. Yeah, no, that's a good point. The sidewalk kind of gets sacrificed a little bit. Yeah, and, and I, I'm glad you mentioned the sidewalk here because we do see, you know, some bikes that are that are parked right here. So they really do kind of squeeze in what sidewalk is there. We'll see some yeah. uh, footage in just a moment where the, uh, <laughs> the sidewalk uh, is preserved a little bit because they went ahead and really encouraged people to park their bikes in that buffer zone. Uh, where you know kind of where you see the cars parked they create some bike yeah. parking over there now um yeah you you're already starting to chuckle why are you already <laughs> starting to chuckle <laughs> well yeah because we have our little our little moment of feeling like we're back at home yeah uh with the uh texas edition i don't even know what is that a chevy I don't know my trucks, Silverado. Yeah, it's a Chevrolet, a Chevrolet Silverado Texas edition. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to press play here because uh, you, you'll uh, you're yeah. actually shouting this to me. So <laughs> I miss that. That's pretty funny. Uh, and then, then I went on. I love say, that it was on this street too. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it was could be more obviously somebody who was doing some work, uh, in the area, yeah. uh, and you know, needed to do that, but uh, reflect on this street because we, we just turned off of a very busy street and a nice, uh, protected separated infrastructure, but now we're in shared space. Uh, what, what did you think when yeah. we, uh, you turned on this one? Well, yeah, it's like you you go from, you know, there's places where you interact with cars and you're the more vulnerable user, but now you're the one who's got to be slowing down and really moderating your your speed and movement. And at the same time, it was still comfortable enough to keep riding. Yeah, this is a great street. Yeah. Obviously, you got to love our, our bollard doing yeah. work. And, uh, I think I talk about that. Street, you can see automated bollard there. And then again, this is like one of the, the one of the busier streets um, that that, that yeah. we come across. And so now we're rolling down this street, and now we can see the the bicycles parked to the left of the cycle path. That way, freeing up the space on the on the right where the the sidewalk is. I just love these these like intersections, like the one we just went through right there. How much different it feels than going across a driveway on a you know, on a bike lane on a street here where you're just totally open and vulnerable to turning cars, maybe not looking at you. But here you've got the, you know, the different paving types and also that extra bit of separation where they've got to, it's got to be more of like a, you know, encountering you perpendicular. Yeah. Um, I just like, I'm noticing it again about how it just never felt stressful yeah. going across those little intersections yeah it's a good point i paused on this just to uh, point out uh -huh. what we're, we're what we see in screen here which are the delivery vehicles and the delivery vans uh so yeah. often what we end up seeing here in north america is that when a delivery is is happening they are actually blocking the bikeway does not happen that right. frequently here not that it doesn't happen ever but it's certainly what we experienced in in harlem is it didn't happen which was very encouraging. Mm -hmm. Those look like they might be designated. I don't know. Like over here, right. there's just they park there because there's no designated spot, and it's sort of understandable. 
I think you are absolutely correct. Yeah. And, and I did get the sense that this was the delivery time, you know, the period of day that that was encouraged, right. yeah. which is very much a part of, you know, how they plan things out. And uh, we see rolling past some kind of cafe areas, another, you know, a truck, you know, parked here and some more. Uh, oh, and, and a transit stop. So talk a little bit about, mm -hmm. you know, what you experienced in seeing, uh, you know, various transit, um, you know, kind of accommodations in uh, in sequence and integrated with the cycle network. Yeah, I mean, that was how we were getting around, right, was a combination of transit and um, and bike. And for the most part, it was pretty, pretty seamless. We didn't do as much with buses as we did with trains. And I guess, I guess people over there aren't necessarily taking their bike on the bus, right, right or on the train quite as much, um, which is why they have some, like, bike share type services it's actually even discouraged they really don't want you to right. bring you know the, the your bike onto the train uh because if everybody did <laughs> then there'd be right. no room for people right that's their own kind of congestion issues right yeah um which is is cool um you know other people have written enough about and studied the the kind of multiplier effect of of having bike and transit connected together and just how far you're able to go yeah what what about you john well one of the things that i'm is is ren is resonating right with me right as we're watching this footage is just like this mm. this ballet this dance that we have with the pedestrian uh and and so it's it's so so comfortable we're all moving close to human speed and, uh, yeah. you know, we're able to navigate around pedestrians. We're able to make eye contact, you know, slight little body movements. There's constantly communication yeah. happening. And you really get a sense that, you know, the streets really are for people in, you know, in this environment. And, you know, there's, there's, I, I never experienced any kind of frustration from the pedestrians towards us as we were riding our bikes around. How about you? Uh, yeah, I couldn't understand why people were looking at me funny when I kept yelling at them to stop jaywalking. But <laughs> probably a language barrier. You did not. <laughs> the cool thing, it's like you saw it just there, you know, people walking across the street at their own speed and not feeling like they got a dart across because it's, you know, it's their space, right? Yeah, yeah. So I paused on this particular uh, street in this particular location because I noticed that it's kind of chunked up a little bit. It looks like it's probably due to be re, uh, redone, reconstructed. It's still a very, very traffic calm street. And as you'll see in just a moment, it's still a, a street where, uh, you know, people feel, you know, very, very comfortable occupying the space. And, and right as we come up around this this corner here, you're going to see somebody in, in a mobility scooter. And so it, it, that just really, for me, drives home the fact that when we create a, a network of safe and inviting cycling facilities and when we create traffic calmed, low speed streets, people will feel comfortable occupying that space. And for somebody in a wheelchair or a mobility scooter like that individual, it's way more comfortable to be in the street than it is to be in, you know, on the narrow sidewalk, which might be a little yeah. bit more chunked up with, with paver stones. So, yeah. And this is just a gorgeous And the whole <laughs> context of just expectation that you're going to encounter people moving like that, moving on bike. Like there's, there's, you know, there's obviously you can impact behavior by a street design like this right but the whole yeah. network kind of gives the message of of uh you know that you're going to intersect with vulnerable users yeah yeah you know i think i i we we turned down the street we th this was very intentional for us we rode past it and we we're like ooh, we gotta go down there because this is like one of the <laughs> right. the super super narrow streets that uh, that we come across and uh 
it's just so cool. I mean, you've got these overhanging, uh, you know, greenery through here and you've, you've got the bikes, you know, you know, parked for the, these residences right in this area here. And it's just, mm -hmm. I, this was one of my favorite parts. Like an outdoor our, hallway. Yeah. 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 An outdoor high, hallway for sure. Yeah. I just love this. Yeah. That was a nice move. <laughs> And then it connects to another series of of narrow little passageways and narrow streets. Uh huh. It's just so so cool, and we there's a little bit of construction going on here. But uh, yeah, I mean, when we were rolling down this part of it, I mean, I just got this sense of calm. You can just get yeah. a sense as to you know how quiet it is in this area, and um, I don't know. I mean, it, it to me. These environments are always more comfortable than being, you know, even in protected and separated infrastructure next to and adjacent to moving automobiles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no question. And I, I think the efficient use of space here is really, you know, especially notable in these more confined spots. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think even this snapshot right here is a good example of that. But, you know, maybe in a, in a setting where space is more taken for granted, you you consider these little passageways to be sort of throwaway, um, avoidable areas. But it's like you have so much, you know, this low-hanging fruit to make a place like this really comfortable because yeah. it's already got that enclosure. Just how quiet yeah. it is oh, nice. back in these little streets, tiny streets. Green infrastructure. Yeah, kind of like alleys, but just human-scale streets. This is what you get with very, very old cities. And it's funny that I said very, very old cities, and, and it's true. This is a very, very old city, but then I look, we turn the corner, and I look up, and the building on the right is a modern building. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, what's nice about it is they maintain, they, there is a lot of new construction in this particular neighborhood, but, uh, of course, they maintain mm -hmm. that character of the narrow streets, the narrow passageways, and, again, great, great example of that gal navigating around that pedestrian, you know, no fuss, no muss. So good mm -hmm. stuff. And we're, uh, we're, we're sort of now we're, we're still out on what I would consider a, a feet strut because it's a complete, that particular yeah, street was you know, still completely street. paved over, uh, in bricks. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to rewind just about 30 seconds so we can see that, that transition again. So we go from a really, really narrow feet strut shared street sort of situation with bollards on either side. We, you know, we get to this street which is a little bit wider. We see some traffic calming, um, sinusoidal, you know, sort of speed bump uh, areas there. It's still paved in brick. Um, and then uh, we, very quickly, we, we, we kind of find ourselves yeah, facing this. Interesting. <laughs> so, um, this is I'm a little gonna, confusing. Yeah, I'm going to turn up the volume on this uh, on this part because I actually have some narration on, on this. And I'm basically saying, whoa, where are we at? <laughs> Street looks like priority is given to the motor vehicles. I see no provisions. And I didn't even finish my sentence. I basically was saying I see no provisions for for people on bikes, and it's true. We just yeah. we were sitting there. We're like, well, wait a minute. There's no uh -huh. bicycle signal here. There there was uh -huh. no indication. We just sort of took the lead of that pedestrian to our right, who went ahead and crossed, and and that pedestrian right. crossed without even getting a, a yeah. signal either. This was the one street that I was just like, okay, this was a head scratcher for me. Yeah. And this would be our like best best street <laughs> in a lot of cities. So uh, it, and, then, and I'll turn the the volume back up on on this because we uh, we we go through this and I talk a little bit yeah. about this rather interesting mm -hmm. design of the 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 curb, um, you know, protecting the, uh, the 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 cycle path here.
very interesting design on this curb. It's like, is this mountable or not? <laughs> I can't decide. And lots of bike parking. Oh, we're back at the main train station. Oh yeah, looks so different from all the others. Yeah. And we see lots of outdoor bike parking. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It was one of the most beautiful train stations, as we mentioned earlier. And I, yeah. I got a kick out of this area, too. Look at this beautiful metal work that's uh, going underneath the train track area here. Uh, just super, super fun. And then we go into the blinding light and then boom, there's the urban arrow <laughs> coming at us. Yep. And then, and then oh, yeah. we, we hang a right here and uh, we're back on another one of those busy streets. And, and take a look at this because it's, it's rather interesting. We go, basically, we're separated by nothing more than paint here. But then we get into uh, sort of a narrow, cramped, parking, protected uh, lane. Mm -hmm. I felt pr perfectly comfortable, but notice the difference here on this one compared to uh, the one that we pointed yeah. out earlier. Yeah. I think that's like illustrates how a lot of the, the cycling and road like roadway network is there it's sort of just like well they're going to do their best with the space they have and not every single space is going to give you enough room for you know you it would be nice to have a couple feet there for for doors opening but they weren't gonna it seems like let that stop them from still making a usable cycle path right you could just kind of hug the right a little bit more and maybe maybe that changes how your behavior if you're biking with somebody side by side but i don't know does that make sense yeah no totally and i'm just reflecting as i'm watching us you know, roll through here and watching the motor vehicles traveling through here and noticing just how how slowly they're moving through that environment even though it's a rather spacious uh generous you know road in in terms of you know network mm -hmm. you know perspective so uh, gosh, yeah, in North America, I, I would imagine that, you know, the speeds would probably be double what we just experienced there. Yeah, I mean, and even even though it looks like a pretty, you know, bigger street by these standards is still, I feel like, a few feet narrower than in the same context um, here, right? And we definitely still did see plenty of aggressive, you know, driving behavior. Um, I, I don't know that it was the norm, but we, you know, certainly there if you want to, if you want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And here we go, rolling past a, a gas station, a fueling station. Um, and then we start to see as we kind of looped back around and what, now we have the, uh, the windmill off to the left here and we're getting back into the, the core. Nice shot of the, uh, windmill there. Church steeples in the background and some fun newer housing right over here right along the canal right along the river and we'll see those uh, houses again in, in just a little bit and we'll be right up next to it and we'll go pay the, that uh, windmill a visit but yeah, it was, and again, we're, we're, we're sort of in that arena where this is clearly a major arterial, <laughs> Dutch arterial <laughs> perspective, mm -hmm. uh, you know, through, through this area. And you can see the, the river, the canal areas over there. And uh, this is gonna be the opportunity that we, we take to actually go over the river. Uh, but notice what we're on right here. We're on nothing more than just a painted bike lane, so. Right. Kind of a, a, another, I, I think it. it's important to point out that yes, to the right is a feet strut sort of area, but sometimes, yeah, you're on nothing more than a painted bike lane, even in the Netherlands. Yep. Yeah, it shows that they're always kind of evolving and, and improving their best practices. Yeah, yeah. Now we're, we're here, we, we went ahead and, uh, you know, press the 
the, the button for the light. And so we're going to pause here and we get our signal and then off we go. And so even the, so at least on this particular intersection compared to that other one where it was confusing on this one, we did have uh, a priority signal to be able to get us across the street over onto this edge lane road. And now we're starting to get into, you know, a mixture of some really, really old housing type, you know, housing stock, as well as some newer stuff. This is sort of the older uh, housing. And then uh, very, very soon, we're gonna see some, some of the newer stuff. And uh, we also see a lot of construction here. So we actually take quite a few sure. diverting turns because uh, it's like, oh, construction, oh, construction. So it happens there too. <laughs> <laughs> and it has to get built somehow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the other nice thing that a uh, very, very interesting thing about this is you'll notice that this is a brand new uh, feet strut. And I think I have some commentary on this. After we look at that building. <laughs> Old buildings here. This looks like a recently paved Pete Strat with the telltale sign of the sinusoidal speed bumps. Again, for bikes, very, very comfortable. But for motor vehicles, if they're traveling more than 30 kilometers per hour, they get punished. You can see a mixture of the, the old and new here into progressively newer construction. And speaking of construction, we have lots of construction here. And we flip a U-turn and, and, and head back. And then we make our way uh, kind of over to, to that wind, windmill there. But uh, reflect on this a little bit in terms of just the that quality of streetscape, you know, of doing these by brick it's just it's phenomenal yeah i mean it was still comfortable enough to ride a bike on and i don't know something I, something about it is just a little bit calming and i don't know what kind of conditioning it is but it it makes it feel a little slower a little bit more human oriented yeah, yeah. um and the elevation, you know, the subtle elevation changes really helped. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember who uh, talked with us about the sinusoidal uh, speed bump design, but I really noticed it afterwards. I think it was Josh. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, uh, that would have been in Nijmegen. Um, and mm -hmm. the, the, that design is just so intelligent because for for you and i we were able to easily roll over it on bikes but then for motor vehicles if they're traveling more than 30 kilometers per hour uh, i use the term punish but you know really what i mean is yeah. it, it becomes quite obvious that they're traveling too fast now earlier when we were rolling down uh, one of the main drags we i sort of panned over and focused in on a row of new houses uh and that's what we're at so we're right next to uh right on the riverfront here um rolling past these newer houses uh and this is kind of a neat little area here because they're newer houses built on sort of an older kind of format and now we're along those houses along the river that we were looking at earlier. Newer construction. Some of the quiet little alleyways they have. Very nice waterfront benches. Like you could sail quite a ways with that one. <laughs> like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> so, when we were over in this neighborhood, what were some of your thoughts uh, that were kind of rolling through your mind while we were, you know, rolling along the waterfront and and sort of weaving in and out of this neighborhood? Yeah, well, I, I mean, for one, they just took advantage of the proximity to water you know, instead of having a busy road along it, um, 
it was everything was oriented towards the water like all the benches as you saw um it functioned as you know a way of getting through there but you wouldn't have hesitated to sit there enjoy a cup of coffee have a gathering um another thing that i just noticed on that street but on literally every street is just how many uh like trash receptacles there are mm -hmm. and how hard it can be in some u.s cities to find just a trash can to throw stuff away right yeah. um that's a good point so guess what we have a new street <laughs> so we turned the corner <laughs> and boom yeah, we we actually came into the fact because earlier i had commented that oh this looks like it's a new feet straw you know that's been recently paved mm -hmm. in brick and uh, we turned the corner from uh, that little waterfront uh, canal street or river uh, front street. And voila, we're at this, this area. And uh, I think I say a few words on it, but uh, let's press play and take a look at this and then we'll talk about it. And you can see the construction of a new brick road. What's the old saying? Follow the br yellow brick road. Well, here's follow the red brick road. You can see how they just line them up and do the finite work of getting the final pieces in. I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> it's so artful, right? Like it's yeah. functional, but it is also like very nice to look at. <laughs> yeah. And throughout our, 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 our time together riding uh, through the various cities, uh, we saw multiple times where uh, construction crews or maintenance crews were maybe accessing pipes underneath the street. And so uh, and then, you know, putting the sand back in and then and placing the, the, the bricks and the paver stones back in, the cobblestones back in. It sort of emphasized for me that even for accessing utilities, it's way more intelligent to do it this way um, than yeah. than to have concrete or, or asphalt that you have to cut into and then repatch over and the patches are never yeah. quite the same. Um, I don't know. I just, and you can yeah. have some permeability with this approach too for, for water. Excellent point. Excellent point. Yeah, from a, from a green standpoint, from a stormwater um management standpoint um yeah i mean that that permeability uh that ability to have that water filtration has got to be just incredibly important in in this environment in yeah. any environment so how, how how important is that for uh you know for the environment and for water tables and, and things like that yeah well um you know runoff from streets is a huge source of of pollution especially being able to filter it and slow down the the flow of, of uh storm water um off of roadways it's it's really important um i think we've seen little bits and pieces here of of green space sort of integrated into the ro into the roadway area right. i mean it's critical um and in cities you know we're going to have a lot of paved spaces um so it's extra important the way that 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 functions and obviously soils play you know soil type play play a part here and how much you can do with permeable pavement and so on but yeah 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 you have to think that this is just really, know to handle their water yeah well not only that and 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 just being able to you know ensure that you know you have less pollution going into your waterways it is that's yeah. amazing so now we're on again still um, in the same neighborhood now we're making our way uh, yeah. back to uh the the actual um windmill and we thought to head this way because we saw some kids <laughs> these kids were heading back over here and we're like where are they going and here we go that's where the kids were going to the windmill. Nice. Now, the bike parking here at the windmill. There you go. 1778. 
1932 and then 1999. Cool. I think it's great that the kids, you know, again, those are probably, you know, teens or tweens or, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood. And uh, they were just riding over there to kind of hang out a little bit <laughs> on clearly an afternoon that uh, many of the kids had off. So. Yeah, because we went to Leiden after this, and there was a whole field trip happening. So, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. it was just a free for all day there. Who yeah, who knows? <laughs> but it was it was super cool. And then we're back onto the sort of the main drag here, and um, we're going to make our way uh, sort of into the, the the main city area, and then eventually getting back over towards the uh, the transit station. But again, we just. I mean, that was the major street there, and we just sort of navigated our way. We didn't really, there was no yeah. real facilities for us per se, just a little bit of, you know, color on the ground and a little bit of paint. Uh, but then, boom, we're right back into these really nice, narrow, pedestrian priority streets. And then you take a look at all the greenery that, that uh, the residents are putting out. Nice little benches again. I mean, for me, this is just zen. <laughs> Yeah. It's and, broken up so nicely. Yeah, it's personalized. Yeah. And another uh, another uh, uh, elderly person with a walker uh, making her way down through there. So again, very, very comfortable. It's it's certainly not anti-car. We see there's there are some provisions for, for car parking uh, here along the canal. This is one of your favorite things that you uh, commented on about cars parking next to canals. Yeah, and I'm just noticing there's a little rail along this canal. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? I did. A lot yeah. of, like, everywhere in Delft, you know, the same parallel parking exists. And, man, what a high-stakes <laughs> parallel parking situation. <laughs> and what do you mean by that? I'm sure... I'm I'm sure <laughs> there have been cars that have fallen into canals yeah. by overshooting. Because, yeah. you know, we would see them an inch or two off of the canal. I, I don't know. It's just wild yeah. to me. Yeah. And now we, we did get blocked finally by a delivery van. So we popped up onto the uh, the sidewalk here and, and navigated around it. Again, yeah, it, it, no stress, very, very calm environment and, you know, whatever. We just went around. No big deal. Mm -hmm. it, it's It's no big deal when, you know, when there isn't you know, massive high speed motor vehicles that you're, you know, being diverted into. So, yeah. yeah. And, you know, we were talking about the construction before. Yeah. And we didn't, we haven't really had maybe a great example here to show, but we encountered construction a lot of times. Yeah. And as far as I can remember, um, you know, bikes were always given a viable route around the construction. Um, yeah. And I can think of, I actually took video of one outside of Delft, like in a really rural setting. Um, but I can think of so many examples here. Let's just pick on Dallas where um, cars always have multiple extra alternatives because it's probably like a six lane or a four lane road, right? So you can you can move from two lanes down to one lane of tra traffic and still go through. But often the sidewalk and the bike lane are just completely, you know, you're out of luck. Um, and they do such a good job of of making sure that you can keep, you know, keep going just like you're a, you know, a vehicle. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a really good point. Uh, and in fact, I do have some really good video from um, uh, from Amsterdam of a wonderful, uh, high quality, uh, you know, construction protected oh, yeah. bike lane diverter and so we'll cue that one up that's actually um we were interviewing uh, jason slaughter with not just bikes on that particular one so that'll be a, a fun future video so then we're we we kind of make our way you know up to this point here and uh this is another fun spot because again huge that's pack great. of kids <laughs> i love this yeah yeah this was a different looking street than we've seen up till now too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. You can obviously see the, 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 the permeable, uh, the filtered permeability there. It is a uh, pedestrian and bike street prioritized. There are some motor vehicles that are allowed in this environment, but clearly they can't go through. 
And I think here I talk a little bit about. You can see the lighting here. So at night, this is all lit up. A little festive scene. It's quite nice. And again, you just see all the kids all around through this area here. And again, this is this is actually what I would consider one of their main drags. We're actually now on uh, the main major um, two-way cycle path. Uh, we had transit uh, right in this area. And guess what? We are actually coming up to the transit station. And this cycle path is really quite wide, quite extensive, leads us right to the transit station. Again, inside this transit station is probably one of the most impressive we've seen the entire trip. An old structure. And here you can see how it's been turned into a massive area for bus staging. So you can see a lot of buses queuing up, getting ready to get out quite the extensive transit hub and then part of the old building for the transit station there we go there we go man so that was harlem that was fun that was great yeah yeah so that was your final day in in the Netherlands and and uh, as you mentioned earlier after Harlem we jumped on the train and went to Leiden and uh, and and then spent the afternoon there but uh, why don't you just reflect a little bit upon what we just saw and in kind of you know being able to kind of cap off your two weeks stay in the Netherlands with with Harlem yeah I'm I'm glad we made the time to go out there I'm you know you start to see pick up on through lines through every one of these cities and they the they each have their own sort of local peculiarities and their own sort of take on the canal systems and everything but um i guess one of the through lines is that you know you can always get somewhere um on bike and you know that um in general it's going to be a, a friendly user experience um yeah and i think this was a good um I think Harlem was a good place to showcase that. Yeah, and it was neat too, because we were so close to Harlem the, for the first couple of days that we were there yeah. when we were attending the International Cargo Bike Festival because uh, the the location of the festival was uh, sort of in between where the, the airport was uh, for, for Amsterdam and the, uh, and, and in, in Harlem and so we didn't actually get a chance to see Harlem when we were really really close to it we actually rode through some of the outskirts of the city uh, but yeah it was super, we had super a fun. rural ride in Harlem that's right yeah 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 that's good well Jordan thank you so much this was really really fun to uh, sort of re-experience uh, that particular ride in that particular city and uh, gosh thank you so much for doing this this has been a lot of fun Thanks for having me on. There was, I mean, more to comment on than we really had time to, to do there. But um, th this was this was fun to relive that ride, which was, you know, a great day of a great day um, of out of many great days over there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And folks, I hope you enjoyed this as well. Uh, kind of a different format uh, uh, for a uh, infrastructure sort of profile video. And uh, if you did, please remember, give it a thumbs up, <laughs> leave a comment down below. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, I really appreciate your support. And uh, hey, until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health and happiness. Cheers. Also sending out a very big thank you to all my amazing Active Towns ambassadors who are directly supporting my efforts through Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, the YouTube Super Chats and Super Thanks, as well as buying things from the Active Towns store and making donations to the nonprofit. Every little bit helps and is greatly appreciated. Thank you all so very much.